given what's going on in the world, this seems to be very, very busy. The footfall is amazing. We are actually specialized in magazines, uh, grenades, uh, weapons, you name it. So we produce ammunition, rockets, bombs. And how is business at the moment for, for you guys? It's growing. The war in Ukraine has driven an increase in sales across the portfolio. I'm Matt Kennard, Chief Investigator at Declassified UK. We're here at the DSEI Arms Fair in London, which is populated by Arab dictators, generals, and some of the largest arms companies in the world. We're going to go and talk to people now about how businesses in the context of the war in Ukraine, which has been raging for 18 months. The business environment is very buoyant, is very active. We're seeing new projects launched, uh, but also legacy products that were designed in, in the 1990s are also uh, being rekindled and, and uh, uh, new developments are taking place. So we'll see in a, a very broad and a very deep requirement for all of our military products. Our products range from everything from what we call skin packs. They're used for breaching doors in enemy territory. All the way up to something we're very proud of recently is our uh, mine clearing uh, products that are, are now being sent to Ukraine. Obviously it's an insecure world. People seem to think that it's going to get more insecure. So that, is that an opportunity for you guys? Uh, I, I do believe it's going to be uh, more insecure going forward. I think there's uh, the near term is very dangerous. I think we're seeing it across the globe, all the challenges. There's a, a, you know, a, a strong pivot back to uh, entrenchment from uh, kind of a Cold War mentality. And we're going to see a rebuild of inventory and stock. We've seen it across uh, the entire world with munition uh, inventories being depleted so quickly. I think that's going to cause a 10-year boom in manufacturing and EBAD will certainly be a beneficiary. There is, of course, a steep increase in sales after the Ukraine war started, right? So that we clearly feel, right, that the, the, the main interest of the different governments is again into defending um, themselves and they are upgrading all their kind of equipment. We produce um, ejection seats for uh, all uh, many of the military aircraft around the world. One of the major customers of the Typhoon is the Saudi Arabians and they've been fighting a war in Yemen since 2015 which has been controversial. Do you have kind of regulations in place about who your, where your products end up? We have to pay attention to our end user but Typhoon is a perfectly good example because we don't sell it to Saudi per se, we sell to BAE Systems who provide it. So they then determine the end user. There are regimes here buying weapons, some of the worst regimes in the world. I'm talking about regimes like Saudi Arabia, who recently sentenced someone to death for a tweet. Got the United Arab Emirates, which is a, a brutal dictatorship. Should they be allowed here, and why are they allowed here? Whether regimes are bad or not is a matter of perspective, and a matter of where you stand on a particular argument. But essentially, the delegations are invited by uh, the British government, and we have no say in, in how that happens. That's law. Minister for the Armed Forces, James Heapy, was at the fair and my colleague Phil Miller approached him for comment but he refused to answer our questions. Defence Minister James Heapy, Phil Hello. Miller from Declassified UK. Hi. Hi there. We see there's a lot of Saudi uh, delegation here today. Why, why does the UK sell so many weapons to dictatorships like Saudi Arabia? So there's an How do you MOD, justify that? There's an MOD press office. Feel free to arrange this. Well, you're, to you're, you're, you're the democratically press elected press. minister, sir. Are you aware that Saudi Arabia has sentenced someone to death for a tweet? How do you feel about selling weapons to a regime that does that, Minister? Business is booming for the arms industry, uh, largely because of the war in Ukraine, but also what companies called an elevated threat environment around the world. An increasingly insecure world and a world riven with conflict. The different representatives of arms companies around here are very optimistic about the future for their profits.